Uh, but we do have some results. We had five tournaments last week. Four results are in. Let's go to the results from last week. So, starting with Andre Rublev winning another ATP 500 event. He is the king of the ATP 500s. Uh, he took out Vesely, the big V, uh, the big vessel in straight set, 6-3, 6-4. He was a bit of a surprise to get to the final. Let's go over to Acapulco where Rafa, he won it again. He won Acapulco yet again. He won it two years ago. He's won it two years later. And he looked very good. Didn't drop a set for the entire tournament. He beat Nori in the final, 6-4, 6-4. Of course, beat Medvedev along the way. Iga Sviantec, she won the Doha Open, and she won her second WTA 1000 event. Massive event over in Doha. Um, the equivalent to Indian Wells, which is happening in a couple of weeks. And she demolished Contabate in the final, 6-2, 6 love Very, very good performance from Iga. She played well all week. And also, we have another result from Chile, and it's uh, Martinez beating Baez in the final over in Santiago, Chile, on a clay court. 4-6, uh, 6-4, six, six, four, six, four. So a little bit closer than the results that we've seen over the last 24 hours. So now, there are still matches happening right now, so let's just say that, because Sloane Stevens hasn't started. So she still has to play her match. Uh, by the time this video comes out, or by the time you watch this replay, it's probably already happened. So congratulations to the winner. All right, now it's time to go to the rankings. Let's go and start with the top 10 for the women and also the race to the finals. Massive changes around the top 10 this week, both for the men and the women. Uh, starting with the women's here, we have Barty staying at number one. She is well and truly the best player. We say that every week, but she's th 3,000 points ahead of number two. But we have a new world number two, Krejcikova. Going up to number two in the world after Sabalenka failed to defend all the points she won in Doha two years ago. Sabalenka goes down number three, and uh, Krejcikova goes up to number two. Career high for her. Uh, then uh, you got Sviantec. She went up four spots from uh, from number eight to number four. That's a career equaling for her. And she might be able to overtake Sabalenka in the next couple of weeks if she does well at Indian Wells. Uh, then you also had Contivate. She went up two spots to a career high number five in the world. So good stuff there from both the ladies who played well last week. Um, very, very good ranking uh, boost for all of them. Uh, pushing down Pedosa. She goes down to number uh, six in the world. Uh, two spots lower than last week. Sakri goes down to number seven. And Pliskova, who we haven't seen yet in 2022, she goes down to number eight in the world. Three spots lower than last week. And Muguruza, she stays at number nine. And then we've got Jabor at number 10, rounding out the top 10 for this week. Now, having a look at the race to the finals. And Barty, still number one, no doubt about it. She won the Australian Open. She won a tournament beforehand. She's got a lot of points in her pocket. Uh, but Sviantec, she goes up two spots into the second spot with uh, that win over in Doha. So she gets a lot of ranking points for that. Uh, then you've also got Contivate going up four spots number three after doing a couple of, uh, having a couple of big weeks over in St. Petersburg. And then of course, making the final uh, here uh, yesterday in Doha, uh, pushing down Collins to number four. Uh, Ostapenko, she continues her rise in the ranks. She goes up one more spot to number five in the race to the finals. Madison Keys, though, she drops down three spots from number three to number six in the world. Uh, Sakri, she rockets into the top eight or the top 10 of the race to the finals. Four spots higher than last week after a good week in Doha. Uh, Krejcikova, despite being world number two uh, this week, getting to a career high ranking, she hasn't really added many points and she's gone down three spots uh, from last week. So she's hanging on to that eighth spot. Uh, also, Bedosa pushes down to number nine and uh, Halep, goes down to number 10 with Kudamatova getting pushed out of the top 10 completely. Okay, it's time to check out the men's top 10 because we have big changes. The big change at the top, Daniel Medvedev. He goes up to number one in the world, the first time ever. Uh, the third Russian male to get to number one in the world. He pushes Djokovic out. Uh, of course, we know that Djokovic hasn't played that much, so that's mainly the reason why we are in this position. But hey, Medvedev deserves it. He won a slam last year. He's played very well this year and he gets to number one in the world. Uh, Djokovic at number two. Zverev stays at number three, despite having a, an okay start to the year. Not the greatest start, but he stays at number th uh, number three. Rafa, he goes up to number four in the world after winning Acapulco, pushing City Pass down to number five. And after winning in Dubai, Rublev gets to number uh, seven, uh, six in the world. One spot higher than last week, taking over Berrettini, who goes down to number seven. Uh, Rude, he stays at number eight for this week with Ojali Asim staying at number nine and Hubi Herkash. After a very good week last week in Dubai, he goes up to number 10, back into the top 10, pushing out Sinner. So uh, very good stuff there from uh, all players in the top 10, but some big changes, you know, big changes, especially at the top. Having a look at the race to the finals now and Rafa, he's still at number one, no surprise there with Medvedev still at number two. 
the two finalists of Australia, doing very well since then as well. Uh, Ojel Yassim, he stays at number three. Very good stuff there from FAA, despite pulling out of Dubai this week. Uh, you've got Sidzi Pass at number four after another semi-final week. Uh, and then Rublev, he gets into the top ten. We haven't seen him yet into the race to the finals. He goes up seven spots higher than last week after that win in Dubai. Uh, Chapo also had a good week in Dubai. He goes up two spots to number six in the world, uh, both pushing down uh, the likes of Berrettini, who goes down to number seven, RBA, who goes down to number eight, and Schwartzman, who goes down to number nine. And Cam Norrie, he jumps into the top 10 after getting to the final of Acapulco. He goes up 13 spots higher than last week. A very good week from Norrie. Uh, by the way, Alcarez and, and Monfils both got pushed out of the top 10 because of those uh, two results from Rublev and Norrie. Let me know in the chat, who are you most surprised about? Or let me know in the description if you're watching this video later. Who are you most surprised about? I mean, probably a lot of you are surprised that Medvedev's number one, maybe. I don't know. Uh, he definitely deserves to be there. But who else are you surprised about? Maybe some of the players outside the top 10 that you're surprised about. Are you surprised that Kvitova has gone down to number 30, you know, after, you know, what, two years ago making a final of Australian Open or three years ago? 